here at the Otago Museum we have a big display of preserved moa skeletons and other moa related specimens on display. So let's go take a closer look at this amazing collection. Moa were huge flightless birds that once roamed across New Zealand and across a range of habitats. They belonged to the ratite family, which includes kiwi, ostrich and emu, and other large flightless birds. The moa, however, was the only flightless bird with absolutely no wing bones at all. And when you come and look at the side of the moa here, the side of the rib cage, we can see no evidence of wings. Even here we have tiny little stumpy wings. It's thought that there were nine species of moa, and we've got six of them on display here in the gallery as articulated skeletons. That number has actually changed a lot over the years, and one of the reasons for that is that moa were sexually dimorphic which means the males and females were different sizes and that makes them look like different species even though they're not. I'm going to have to take a step back here to fit this huge moor in. This is the biggest species, the South Island giant moor. And you can see there's two in this case. There's a little one at the front and a big one at the back. The little one at the front is the male and the big one at the back is the female. The female giant moor could reach up to about three and a half meters tall and could weigh up to about 250 kilograms. The moor went extinct about five to 600 years ago due to hunting and loss of habitat. They were particularly susceptible to extinction because they were large, long-lived species that bred very slowly. Now you might notice that this moor next to the two um, giant moor is articulated a little bit differently. You see these ones all have their necks up a bit like giraffes do. This one's got its head lower down. This upland moa here, this, is, this articulation is thought to be a more realistic articulation of how moa would have actually moved and how they would have held their bodies. Although they could reach up their necks nice and high if they needed to, that would have taken a bit of energy, so they would have spent most of their time with their neck nice and low like this. This moor is really interesting because it was found in a cave and it has, it had a preserved egg fragment with it. So it's thought that this female moor, it fell into a cave and it died and it had an unlaid egg. And so when it was articulated, that egg was placed back in the abdominal cavity. We've got some really cool trace specimens on display over here that I'd like to show you. Now these, all of these um, moa specimens, these skeletons and trace specimens, they're not actually fossils because they're not that old and they haven't been preserved in rock. But they have been naturally preserved in environments like caves and swamps. So this little case in the front here, we've got some really cool trace specimens. Let me get nice and close. Now here is a coprolite and as we know that is preserved poop so that's some more dung. We've got some eggshell fragments here and amazingly right next to it a whole egg. There are only three 
intact moor eggs in the whole world, and we've got two of them on display here at Otago Museum. One's here in Southern Land Southern People, and one up in the Nature Gallery. The last thing I wanted to show you in this section of the gallery is the Haast Eagle, and we have a skeleton on display right here. The Haast Eagle was the only natural predator of the moor, and of course because moor was so big, it took a big predator to take them down. The Haast Eagle was the biggest bird of prey in the whole world and it could have a wingspan of up to about 2.6 meters across, which is about the same as the Royal Albatross. The females were bigger and could get to about 15 kgs and could take down a more of up to about 150 kilograms. They had a large, strong, curved beak Perfect for tearing flesh and long talons. Perfect for grasping prey. Those talons could get to about six centimeters long, which is similar to tiger claws. Hast eagles went extinct soon after the moor did, and that would have been partly because of the moor's extinction and partly because of loss of habitat and the extinction of other large flightless birds that they also would have hunted.